Well, I think all countries suffer from um, parochialism of one form or another. Wherever you go in the world today, I'm currently at Boston at Harvard University. Uh, first time I've ever worked in university in my life. Bit of a cultural shock. Um, the, um, but if I sit down and watch the evening news in Harvard, in Boston, or the national news, uh, frankly, it's about as inward looking as I find in many, many, uh, at least Western countries today. Um, so therefore, you're right, it is not case specific to Australia, uh, but it is, I think, case universal and a problem which has at its heart this. We live in a global age, so many of the challenges we face are beyond national resolution but require global cooperation at the highest level. Yet our national political systems become increasingly atomised and balkanised, preventing us from not only achieving a national consensus but an international consensus necessary to resolve the big problems. Let me give you an example. At the Copenhagen uh, Climate Change Conference in 2009, no one worked harder on that than me uh, in the work before to try and bring about a binding global agreement on bringing down global greenhouse gases. But a number of national governments didn't want to go that way. The absence of a culture of global cooperation on the big things that matter at that stage had not existed because each national political lever, whatever they thought in their own heads, was being pulled back always into the insularity of their domestic politics and therefore with an inability domestically to explain a problem which was real and present but whose total manifestation would still be in the future. Ask yourself this question, for example, why is the politics in China of climate change changed in the last year or so? In 2009, China had a particular view based on its perspective of where developing countries lay in their responsibilities to deal with greenhouse gas emissions. If you roll the clock along three or four years, there is a sea change in Beijing because there has been a weather change in Beijing. In other words, you see a climate change in Beijing because, frankly, you can't breathe in Beijing a lot of the time. How do I know that? I'm in Beijing a lot. And my daughter lives there, my granddaughter lives there, my son-in-law lives there. And so suddenly a global problem becomes locally manifest. Um, the challenge in politics is to try through the bully pulpit of national politics to explain to those who vote for you that, frankly, this thing is coming down the railway tracks towards you and we must act, even though we can't see all of its dimensions now. So I'm proud of the fact that I tried as hard as I could. Um, we were able to deliver some global responses to key global challenges, including in the global financial crisis. Uh, but uh, politics is a tough business. Um, and uh, its essential dilemma is this. More and more of the problems we face as nation states go beyond the parameters of the nation state individually to deal with. Yet. The political media of our respective nation states seeks to drag us back down into every aspect of our national political discourse. It is hard to bring these worlds together. Ask President Obama that question, ask President Xi Jinping that question, uh, ask uh, any other head of government that question. I think they'd reflect the same response.